Good evening and welcome to the coffee bar in my home. I'm Joseph Brewer and we're continuing our discussions on uh, my book, A Practical Guide for Church Ushers and Greeters. Tonight is um, number nine and uh, we're also Zoom session number nine and we're doing uh, the second on security tonight. So with that, let's just jump in and get going. So one of the things you're going to find is, and I know it seems silly, but you're going to have hindrances to your security and security uh, program. Um, you're going to have people who, I mean, everybody has their own opinions, their own thoughts, their own ideas. Um, so you're going to have varied ideas as to priorities. Um, so some of those things you're going to feel like they're hindrances to uh, security and to your security, you know, the security program you'd like to implement. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a dance. It's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a struggle at times, and it can be very frustrating also. But you know, you, you've got things like the preaching. Well, obviously, the preaching is the most important thing um, going on on the property. So yes, you know, for sure, you want to make sure and that's and that's what you're doing is you're protecting um, through your security program, you're protecting um, or giving folks the opportunity to listen to the preaching. Um, so God can work so God can have his way through the preaching. Um, so preaching, number one, for sure. Um, but then you'll have people's personal comfort that, um, you know, they, they may find that uh, they think their personal comfort trumps security. Well, you, you got to work with that in that, and it's not always easy. Um, then you have personal preferences and views as to uh, security. So depending on uh, your, I guess, your power structure, for uh, lack of a better term, you know, you're going to answer to somebody um, if you're in charge of security, you're part of the security team. So, um, uh, you know, there, you're going to have to try to work within what they, um, with, you know, their preferences and their views on security. So, and, uh, you know, that, that can be tough. I, I mean, you know, every, because everybody, we're, we're all individuals, we all have different views on how things should be done. And so, you know, but you can't have so many people involved in it that um, it becomes confusing. So you have to, um, you have to work within that. But it can be a hindrance to um, your security and, and how you run your program. Also, other ministries going on. How do those affect it? Finances, fire codes, uh, <laughs> local and state regulations. I mean, we're in Los Angeles, so um, we we live from we could, we're under ridiculous from the state and even more ridiculous from the county as far as the things that we can do. Um, so it's, it's tough, you know, but they're all hindrances to security. So you're going to have to be able to more or less market and sell um, the security program and the security protocols you want to put in place, because, you know, ultimately, you, you're going to have somebody above you who is going to make the final call on what you can and can't do. So, um, and you're going to have to work in that. And it's, you know, it's not necessarily going to be easy for you, but, you know, you, you hope you're on the same page. So anyway, it's just, there will be hindrances to your plan, um, to the procedures you'd like to implement and to the things you'd like to do. And finances are a big one because, you know, there's a lot of things that you may want to do that cost money and the resources just may not be there 
um, to do those things. So you've got to understand that and you've got to um, work within that. So um, just something to keep in mind and, you know, even fire codes for that matter. Um, you know, we, um, the way our property is set up, um, we have, it's a little bit difficult for us to enact all the security um, protocols I'd like to because of fire codes and the things. So um, anyway, just work within those hindrances, um, figure out what is acceptable between the two of you, you know, whoever, whoever's above you or, you know, between you and uh, those above you and come up with the best strategy you can for security. Um, and remember, you can only do what you can do or are allowed to do. Um, so uh, try not to get too frustrated by that, um, you know, but some things are going to be based on the vulnerabilities of your the property itself, how open it is, how closed it is, its location, things like that. So that's going to impact the things that you're able to do. Um, and then you're going to have vulnerabilities that um, you have no control over. And keep that in mind too, because you, you can only do what you can do. So things may arise um, before your team's there. So if you have... Uh, ministries that start much earlier in the day than what your team gets there. Well, you know, see what you can do to work with those ministries, um, which um, I've talked to the men in those other ministries that are there before I am. And so they're prepared uh, to function in a security uh, situation um, before the rest of the team gets there. So that's just you know, it, it's just one of those things that you're going to have to work around because you can't be there 24 seven. And also during the week, um, if you have a Christian school, you have um, church staff on the property during the week, you can't be there all the time. Um, all you can do is, like I said, what you can do, um, what you're allowed to do, and try to educate them to, as best you can, try to implement as many uh, security protocols as you can, and try to make the place as safe as possible for those people. But uh, again, like we talked about last time, um, ultimately, God is our protection. And so be prayed up about those things. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to trust God during when you're not there, and well, even when you are there, but you're you know, you're going to have to trust God to um, take care of things. So, um, like I said, you can only do what you can do or what you're allowed to do. And um, now with your building design, I suggest that you figure out a way at some point during the uh, um, services to have only one entrance that anybody can actually get into the building. That way you only have one spot that you have to watch. Um, <laughs> pardon me. Um, if you have multiple entrances that people are coming in and during the service, that's going to be a lot harder for you to control, a lot harder for you to keep an eye on. If you can, um, cut it down to where you only have one entrance. And uh, that's what we've done where once we reach a certain point, that's it. There's only one way to get in unless one of the security team goes and opens the door for you and allows you access. So um, work towards that goal of just having one entrance once things uh, have reached a certain point. You know, you may want to do that right out the gate if you can. I mean, if, if you can do it immediately, that's great. That that immediately resolves that issue. If you can't because you have so many things going on on your property as soon as you can shut things down lock them down and only have one entrance uh that you you need to control um it'll be uh it, it'll help you out and then that way your team that's outside um can kind of focus on that area instead of having 
um, you know, three or four areas that they need to watch at the same time. Now, granted, you're going to have people inside, but you want to keep the problems outside. You want to stop them before they get inside. So um, anyway, it, it try to get it down to one and one entrance. And you're going to want, in my opinion, you're going to want a minimum of two guys um, outside on your security team. Granted, they're not going to hear the preaching. So you're going to want to rotate them through where they don't miss um, all the preaching on a Sunday. So, you know, maybe you have a set of guys outside in the morning, they're inside in the evening. Uh, then you have a different set of guys outside in the evening and a different set of guys outside on Wednesday, or, you know, if you have a midweek service or whenever that is. So, um, but you need at least two guys outside. And if I had my preference, it would be three, but um, I just don't have uh, the team uh, to be able to do three. So we work with two and we do the best we can. Um, but, you know, keep in mind, there's, there's little things are going to happen. I mean, if like I've had, um, we've had issues over with another ministry going on and they've asked for one of us to come over and assist them. Well, as soon as that guy walks away, now you just have one person in front. Um, so there's been times where a third guy would have been very helpful in those situations. So um, minimum two, preferably three. But, um, you know, what about the restroom? I, I mean, you know, hopefully they go to the restroom before. But what if they don't? What if they're having um, an issue that day and they need to walk away to go to the restroom? Well, if it's one guy, you're you know, your security is done out front. You don't, you no longer have a presence there. Um, so I had um, a situation where <clears throat> someone was uh, in the alley behind our church. He was yelling profanities. He started breaking our fence and I was outside by myself. Um, so now what do I do? Um, you know, it, it wasn't, it, he, he broke one piece, one strip of board off, uh, but it was pointless to call the police. They wouldn't have arrived in time. And so what do I do? Um, my preference would have been to go engage him and find out what the problem was. I, I would like to have walked over and said, Hey, you know, what's going on, buddy? I mean, you know, how are you doing? I, I, you know, obviously there's something going on. Um, you know, is there something I can help you with? And try to help diffuse that situation. But I was unable to because I was outside by myself. I couldn't leave the front of the church because what if that was a distraction to pull me away so something could happen in the front? I, I couldn't take that chance. So I had to just let him do what he was doing and um instead of going and seeing if i could assist so for me that felt like a tremendous failure um on my part and on the part of uh the security at my church because i would really like to have been able to go help that guy because he obviously if he's out there yelling profanities he pulled his vehicle up right next to the fence he's yelling profanities um and you know he may have punched the fence but it looked like he tore a strip off it um so you know aren't, aren't we don't we want to help people don't we have a ministry of helps and so anyway like i said i felt like it was a failure on my part to not be able to just go um engage with that guy and find out if everything was okay. I, I didn't have to open the fence. I didn't have to put myself in a dangerous situation. I could have talked to him through the fence, um, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't leave my church vulnerable to go talk to the guy. So um, just one example of many that I have as to why you need multiple guys outside all the time. And um, so, Keep that in mind. And 
something else to remember is that many from what I from what I've been able to glean um, on webinars and reading uh, situations that have happened in churches, prayer time is one of the most vulnerable times for churches because so if people know that you know you have prayer at a certain time, okay, that they know that heads are down, eyes are closed, people aren't paying attention, people aren't looking around. So it's a dangerous time. And so you want to have a presence um, that is watching um, while the others are praying. And, I, I, you know, these all these things are frustrating for the people who are doing it because they can't go and participate um, in those other things that they'd like to be doing. You know, they'd like to be in their prayer time also, but, um, you know, they also have an obligation to <clears throat> keep an eye on things. So anyway, you know, multiple guys outside um, to try and keep the problems outside and address the things as they happen. And I'll, I'll get into more of the things that have happened um, when I get over into the incidents that have happened in our church. Um, security for your kids is uh, I, very important. And uh, it's something that I think is, sh you know, should be highly, uh, one of the highest priorities is watching out for the little ones. So um, I have one of my security guys posted in front of our church's nursery. And they're making sure that it's only the parents dropping off the children and picking up the children, that others aren't going in there, others aren't, um, you know, doing anything. And um, which also, as part of security, um, we only have women uh, that work in our nursery. We also do a background check on um, anyone who works with kids has a background check done on them. And if you think somebody's a little sketchy, um, just ask them for their information. Tell them you want to run a background check. You want to, you know, that this is our standard procedure around here. Uh, we run background checks on people and we'd like to run one on you. Uh, we had a guy that left once he was asked that uh, question to get his information to run a background check. He didn't like that idea. He split. Well, okay. Um, you know, I, I think that we probably protected our children and uh, protected our women with that. So um, background checks are a tool, a security tool. Use them and, uh, you know, watch out for your kids. Watch out for the watch out for the ladies. And my preference, it doesn't always happen, but my preference is that the security guy unlock the door to let people in um rather than somebody coming up and knocking on the door I, I prefer to um get the women that work in the nursery the ladies there not to answer the door uh i prefer that they just stay away from that and not become habit to them of opening the door when somebody knocks because i don't want somebody to just oh hey so and so's not here yet go open the door and find out it's you know a bad guy or something that got through so i suggest that you um you have somebody who watches wherever your kids are and if you can do it have them unlock the door and open the door for access to allow people entrance uh, just a little bit more security for your kids and something I think is important. Now, this one, you might find this one um, initially might sound a little weird, but <clears throat> church transfers, um, church member transfers, that's a security issue. Now, you know, initially you got, what? The, no, yeah, yeah. Um, I was listening to two preachers um, just engaging in conversation. I wasn't listening, um, <clears throat> you know, for to write, you know, to write about it in this book. I was just listening to their conversation. They were rehearsing 
the different problems that they've seen over their, you know, 30, 40 years of ministries of um, bad uh, transfers where, you know, somebody just shows up from another church and, you know, and they came in and they, they caused trouble. Now, um, a long held Baptist tradition is a letter of transfer. So if you are um, going to another church, <clears throat> if you're leaving your home church for some reason, uh, moved, whatever, uh, if you're leaving your home church, then you would get a letter of transfer to the church that you were going to. Now, that's incumbent on the receiving pastor to ask for a letter of transfer. Uh, most of the time, you know, because we do ask, um, you know, if you they have a home church, if they're coming from someplace else, because we want our church to grow um, by seeing people saved. I mean, we're an evangelistic church. We're not trying to grow through um, church membership transfers. So um, we want to see people who don't have a church home come in and we want to see them get saved and become members of our church so we're an evangelistic church not a well a sheep stealing church uh either so you come to our church and our pastor is going to ask you um for a letter of transfer if you're coming from a different church so um now i also had some personal family uh stories also about uh bad experiences with church transfers you know people that show up um at your church obviously you want your church to grow obviously um in order to grow we have to have people come in and especially if you're an evangelistic church you want unchurched new people coming in but <clears throat> You still want to be cautious. So uh, my grandparents' church uh, that my grandpa's sister went to, uh, they had a couple of guys come in that were predators. And so what they would do is they would ingratiate themselves with the older folks and rip them off. Um, they would um, get free rent, they would drive their cars, they would do all kinds of things like that, steal things from them, um, get, you know, con them into giving them money for various things. So, you know, you want to be careful with your church transfers, you want to look into it, you want to watch out for it. Um, and, you know, if they say that they came from another church, well, they might have left there because uh their secret was found out that they're a predator or a thief and before you know legal um things came down on them they got out you know so it's just something to consider something to think about is you know church member transfers they're, they're not all uh just you know good to go so pay attention to those now it, it could be that the person was just under so much conviction by the Holy Spirit, they were trying to get away from that. Well, you want to send them back to their home church. You, you know, you don't want to steal sheep from some other pasture, you know, send them back to their church, let them deal with um, the work that the Holy Spirit's doing, um, instead of, you know, letting them come in and feel comfortable and, and, you know, no, send them back to where they came from. If they had a home church, that's, you know, a local home church, not if they moved from, you know, halfway across the country, obviously you can't just send them back home, but, you know, if they're from, you know, a few towns over, well, our city's over, uh, send them back. Um, you know, it's don't steal sheep, you know, be evangelistic. See folks, there's a lot of unchurched folks. Let, let's see them saved. All right. Anyway, that'll do it for tonight. Uh, thank you for stopping by and uh, let's close with some prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for this opportunity that we could gather together. Pray that you would just protect these churches and ministries. 
uh, protect all of us, watch over us. Pray that you give us wisdom in uh, how we deal with things and that you would just um, bless our churches and we would see folks saved and our church, our memberships would grow. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and have a good evening.